Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to let you in on the things you need to know before you make a move to Cape Town. So we're going to count down from five and I wonder if you can guess what the number one thing is that you should know before you make a move to Cape Town. We'll get there but before we do, if you have any questions or you're thinking of making a move down to Cape Town, we know somebody who is. You can reach out to me in the link below, you can send me a WhatsApp, drop me an email or give me a phone call. I'd love to have a chat. All right, so let's get into it. So counting down from five, number five is the weather. While it's true that we do have our good days, the weather is a little bit different to the rest of the country. I grew up in East London, so I have a little bit of a sense of it as well. And I'm sure there are a lot of places elsewhere in the world where the Cape weather differs somewhat. You've heard of the Cape of Storms, you've also heard of the Fair Cape, so what do you actually make of it? Well, while the rest of the country is summer rainfall, Cape Town is actually winter rainfall which is not the best because winter is quite cold and to have it wet on top of it it's not fantastic so you do need to carry a coat with you you do need to carry an umbrella with you in winter during summer uh, it gets very warm and you do tend to have lovely mornings but as you move into the afternoon it can get a little bit windy so be prepared for some wind as well given that it's a coastal city the weather can also be quite variable so again always keep a jersey close at hand in fact, probably the best time of year in Cape Town is your spring and autumn months. The weather and wind tends to go away a little bit and you have lovely, long, beautiful days. Moving on to number four on our list of five. So we've got areas and neighborhoods. Now, Cape Town is made up of a number of different areas. You've got the Atlantic seaboard, which I think everyone thinks about when they think of Cape Town. You've got Camps Bay, you've got Clifton, you've got the waterfront. You've got all that good stuff happening out over there. Then there's the City Bowl, which is the center of Cape Town that central area where the uh, central business district is. And then you've got the northern suburbs, southern suburbs, and moving further south, you get down to the deep south and the peninsula around Nordic and those areas. Going further afield, you've also got the Helderberg made up of Somerset West, Strand, Gordons Bay, and then a little further north, Stellenbosch as well. So there's quite a few areas in Cape Town, and each area offers something a little bit unique. Uh, what is great about all these different areas, you tend to have very good schools in all the areas, and they all tend to have their own central business district as well. So you can be in, for instance, the southern suburbs and you can make use of the malls and businesses in and around Claremont. So while each area is almost distinct by itself, uh, it does offer everything that you do need. And Cape Town is also actually quite easy to navigate. So if you are living in one of those areas, it's not too difficult to get around. That being said, in the mornings, it can take a long time if you're traveling into work. Traffic does tend to be a little bit of an issue. Now, when you're looking at each area, within each area, your suburbs and where it is in relation to other places and what it offers will determine your price to some extent as well. In fact, if you're not very familiar with Cape Town, I would say it's actually probably a good idea to either visit before you make your move or to rent for a year and just get a really good sense of the different areas, what they offer and whether that suits the lifestyle that you want to live and who you are. Okay, moving on to number three, quality of life. I think this is a big reason that people actually make a move down to Cape Town. So I think people visit Cape Town, they see the beauty of the environment, they visit the restaurants, they visit the winelands, they go up the mountain, they go have a day on the, at the beach, go into the sea. And they feel like the quality of life, and when I talk about quality of life, I'm talking about those things that enrich your life. They see it and they think, wow, the quality of life here is fantastic. And it is, it's lovely. There's so many things to do. You can pick and choose any activity under the sun. If you're into mountain biking, if you're into hiking, if you're into surfing, if you're into kayaking, whatever it may be, you can, you can do it here. So it gives you the option of choice. Service delivery, I mentioned a second ago, is second to none in South Africa. It really is good. You get in touch with somebody if there's an issue and it generally is fixed within a day or two. So I think people look at this and they go, well, there's so much on offer. Things work a little bit better. My quality, my quality of life is gonna be so much better when I move to Cape Town. And certainly that's high up on the agenda uh, when people are looking at Cape Town as a destination. And number two, I wanted to touch on community. So one thing I often hear when talking to people or listening to people who've made a move down to Cape Town or have stayed here for a little period of time and then moved back to wherever they're from is that Cape Town is very clicky. It's difficult to break in, it's difficult to make friends. 
uh, it's difficult to meet people and I get that. I moved here probably about 10 years ago, grew up in East London. I traveled around the world to some extent and when I moved back to South Africa, Cape Town was the spot I chose and it was difficult to break in and I think there's a few reasons that go into this. I think the school systems here are strong and you find that the old boys and old girls form really strong networks and tend to stick together somewhat. Uh, that goes for the universities as well. You also find that there's a lot to do. I mentioned activities earlier. People are out and about and doing things all the time, whether it's going out in the evenings, whether it's going away for a weekend to one of the small dorpies outside Cape Town, uh, whether it's popping down to the beach or going up a mountain. There's things on the go all the time. So people tend to be very active and they tend to do those things in their groups and they're not necessarily looking to meet new people through that. Uh, through that activity. One of the things I would suggest is that moving down you become part of a community and that community might be the neighborhood that you end up living in, it might be a group of people who do things that interest you as well. You might join a mountain club, go hiking with them, you might join a biking club, go biking with them, you might join one of the clubs that goes out to the, uh, to the tidal pools and go take a swim with them. I think that's a really great way to start meeting people and I think in other places people might approach you more openly. In Cape Town if you do make the effort you will get a lot of reci reciprocity and you will easily make friends. It's by no means an unfriendly city. People are just taken up in everything that it has to offer. And until the last one, number one, I wonder if you guessed what it would be. I think if you've heard all the rest, you probably know, it's price. And it's not quite what you think. If you've had a look of it at any of the houses and properties in Cape Town, you probably already know that that is quite expensive. And you can compare that to anywhere else in South Africa. What you pay for here for a similar property anywhere else is going to be more. Cape Town does tend to be very expensive, whether you're buying a property or whether you're renting. That being said, your living costs don't tend to be quite as high. Cape Town has a thriving agricultural sector and because it's a coastal city you tend to find your fuel uh, and your food and other amenities tend to be a little bit cheaper because there aren't the transport costs of taking it up to uh, the inland areas in South Africa. So while your living expenses from a, from a house and property point of view might be slightly more, the rest of it is fairly reasonable. In fact, restaurants and all that sort of thing are also on par with other places in South Africa. So those are a few things to consider when moving down to Cape Town and I would strongly, strongly recommend that you do give us a visit first. Don't just come down and dive straight in. Give us a visit, get a sense of what Cape Town's about. Make sure it's the right place for you and rent for a little bit if you're coming down. Get a sense of the neighborhood, get a sense of it, whether that works for you and then take the next step. And when you are ready to take that next step, give me a call. I'm happy to help.